so I'm cruising through a parking lot of the building on the right side and I start to hear a rotational clicking and the rotational clicking you know is going along with how fast I'm going and then I start to notice when I'm hitting little twisties that it goes quieter and louder in the rear end so yeah I noticed that my rear wheel bearing is going bad so I might as well replace it uh, I got the cheapest of the cheapest that I could find with the hub actually pressed in to pepper stop actually pressed in uh, already so then I didn't have to worry about that or anything um, that can be quite a hassle um, Regardless, I, I went ahead and got the cheapest of the cheapest off of eBay and they lasted for a little while. But now it's time to replace those with something a slight bit better, which I got these a while ago. I replaced the driver's side a long time ago, uh, probably about 7,000 miles ago on the driver's side rear and I bought them in a pair. And this is uh, the other one which would be my back passenger side but these roll pretty good and I don't know if that, that helps out the, the part number anything like that but these come in the box with the hub already pressed in there so I'm gonna go ahead and disassemble the whole back side here and start to get that replaced see if I can get that done uh, without without haste or with haste I'm trying to get it done quickly Definitely brand new. Not really. Really need replaced really soon. Here's a burn off tire. Swing check. Okay. Let's take the wheel spacer off and get to the rotor. Bro. 
rotor is loose, so since the rotor is loose, if it wasn't, then I would suggest hitting in between here without trying to strike that and messing up your threads. But then you can hit in between here and try to get that surface to break loose in between each other and keep going forward. All right, so I went and grabbed the socket that fits the center here. And I have no idea. You tell me what, what size that is, but I do have a digital micrometer here to maybe huh. if you hit the right button. So that'll tell me uh, what size it is, which it happens to be flat to flat and it messed up. Let's see here, 32 negative. So let's try this again. Zero. Did I hit the button by accident? Probably. So yeah, 32 millimeter. And that's the bolt size or the socket size to fit the center. Love having a digital micrometer. It, it really makes things a guessing game. Like gone. So. A lot of times if you have to break an axle loose, you can shove a screwdriver in between uh, the caliper and the rotor because it has these little fins in between here. And if you can get a screwdriver to stick in between there and jam that in between, then it'll lock it all. But I know that there's enough resistance on this that it'll, it'll just rip apart. Just like that. Oh. So, real easy. I've been in there before and there's there's anises on there. Just grabbing another uh, basic tool. I don't even know if I need that, but I got a extension. Uh, this is a lifesaver just because it's ratcheting and you get a lot more torque on this little ratchet and it's from Harbor Freight, Pittsburgh. So I, I really uh, love that. And then I have a socket set. And take the, figure out what size collar for bracket bolt it is. Starting with 19 fits on there perfectly. Make sure it's not 18, which it's not. Go for 19. Lock that all the way. Upper one's broken loose, and then I'm just before I even twist that off, I'm going to find the lower one. The main point we want to pull that off of there is so we can get the rotor off. I think this is where I needed the extension. Mm. Teeny tiny extension. Let's see if that'll work. Still in the wall. Find the crack bolt. Down there. Hey -ya! That little extension helped out a lot to get to that lower bolt down below. For the bracket. Now lock that back in real short and it's a lot easier with your swinging range and you can get a lot more done with a longer swing. Longer swing, less time. Upper bolt. Oh. I'll put that down. Upper 
caliper bolt. There it goes. And the wiggle helps to relieve or find a loose point because this metal rotor is, is pushing out so then when that happens it'll kind of bind the bolt maybe making you think that you need to put more force in to twist it off but that's why the wiggle is there I love to wiggle oh, nicely just put this over here, maybe up here. Okay, and then remove the rotor. Yay! There'll be four bolts to remove the uh, wheel bearing. Which I'm glad it's a bolt-on type. It's not necessarily a uh, press-on. There is some some pressing that can be done, but. This is a generally spoken as a, uh, hmm. I don't know if that's the right size or not, 14. But this is a, this would be a uh, bolt-on style bearing. I like better, but let me see. Uh, let's see here. To get access to the bolts, because there's just little too little a clearance to actually try and f even figure out if that's the right one or not all you have to do is just <coughs> all you gotta do okay all you gotta do is use some persuasion and that would be a rubber mallet if you have one just because you I'm not going to uh, ruin any kind of uh, threads when I hit the top of this if uh, you don't have a rubber mallet or a mallet that won't, uh, that is, you know, not metal. Do yourself a favor and just put, put this bolt back on. And when you put it on, screw it, almost flush. Something like that. You're not ruining too much or you can even actually do it completely flat like that. Because if you hit that metal or even the nut, and it kind of puts a bind on the front of the threads you still have this bolt already on here to help re-thread it when you take it back off so that's just something that you know helps out a lot of times and tries to save you for trying to mash it up and then trying to put this on here you know at the actual right way it goes this way but putting that on there so let me just Give her a good whack or two. Well, it was real easy. No, not really. It was Wonderful. Wunderbar. Okay, and then I can even use a screwdriver. On the very tip, just to, since it's already loose, I'm staying away from the threads. Trying to. That's not going to back all the way out of there. I mean, it is still attached to uh, the rear differential. So uh, it's not going to back out all the way. But what I was trying to get was clearance for this to fit back here. And is that the right size? I don't think that's even the right size. I think it's bigger. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's bigger. Let me, let me see what's going on here. 
17. That's popular. Yep. Yep, that's 17 millimeter back there to get this bolt, that bolt, and the other two on the other side to actually get that loose. So don't like that angle because the ring of the... Yeah, exactly right there. That's protruding up. So that's the actual half shafts, and then that's all rubber right there. That's protruding up. That's in the way. And you're getting a good enough straight shot, so... Take the extension off and get one of these, which I like to like. I don't know how many other people are OCD about that, but I really try to. It doesn't matter necessarily if it's in there or not. Cause nowadays with everything, the way it's cut, locks in there anyway for the most part. But I, I like to put that in there. And there we go. And that's that's a good angle, and I feel yeah, I can feel like I'm actually on there the whole way. Yeah. Yep, that's it. That's the bolt. You got room. So that one's loose. You can see this turning right there. So wonderful. All right, before I get myself caught, oh, I'm caught in a bad position where I can't get my tools out. I'm gonna go over to the far side. Do the same thing. Break these two loose. End up. All right. Here we go. Oh, yep. This one. Yeah. Awesome. All right. There we go. We got a bit more room. Oh yeah, yeah. No binding. I was getting ready to grab the ratchet to put a little bit more force on it, but I'm, I'm literally just binding on, on the half shaft like I just said a few minutes ago. And I might have it stuck. Oh, no, okay. Almost had it stuck. So it's already loose. Bolt number one fighting for that and three more of them see if I can even do that by hand yeah oh yeah it's actually easier by hand oh oh there it is okay number two Number three. Why does the bolt always seem longer whenever your arm is burning, you know? Okay, there it is. Number four. Little. Well, persuasion goes the whole way. That's already opened up. And then, if you can see that moving now, yeah, yeah. There you go. And I just pried back there, in between there, on the flat surface to help try and separate that. So. There we go. All right, let's get an old file and I just like to clean it up just a little bit. A whole bunch of stuff isn't just hanging around. So there is uh, forums of guys or gals, guys and gals, people, um, who receive a clicking noise from the rear. And the clicking noise, uh, long story short, is basically uh, the these splines are dry. And because they're dry, they end up um, 
making some kind of a clicking noise against the actual uh, inside of the wheel bearing. Um, from factory, you're supposed to actually um, lubricate these, and as soon as they dry out, they tend to do the same thing. And what I have here is, yeah, ceramic, ceramic fortified brake system grease. And it's like, what are you doing with brake system grease? Yeah, well, negative 50 to 3,000 degrees. Uh, I don't think this is going to reach 3,000 degrees, but I do like that. And when I'm reading the back of this, uh, made from pure silicone, drive High temperature boundary would be formulated to reduce brake noise vibrations and harshness by dampening on brake vibration vibrating frequencies. <clears throat> um, will stay in place, not run in friction pads or rotors in extreme temperature ranges, you know, blah blah blah, provides protection against dirt, blah blah blah, corrosion, blah blah blah, repels brake dust, blah blah blah. So I'm, I'm thinking this, is, this should work out, uh, only thing there is is remove excess grease keep lubricating off pads and rotors which is pretty darn smart if you ask me so i'm gonna put a little bit of this stuff on to the splines and uh go from there It'll stay there all day. I could fall asleep and it'll still be there. I gotta say that this is this is probably the most long, longest lasting fix for the spine issue that all these 350Zs have. I don't know if you can see that, but on the back side there's just a little bit of that stuff whatever that is that is hard and I don't like it on there so just picking that off all right now that that cleanup is just a hair done too I'm gonna just throw just a little bit of that back there just kind of help that along help any corrosion And we get to grab our trusted, reliable type of quality parts, TRQ. There's so many little companies out there these days. I think when I looked these up, these were one of the few companies that were uh, lower budget, uh, not bottom budget, but lower budget. And they had like a five or ten year warranty with their wheel bearings. And it, if a company can back their wheel bearings with a warranty like that instead of the one year warranty or the 30 day warranty, that's when you know you're getting crap is when the warranty on the part ain't there. And that means that the company doesn't even trust the part in my eye. So TRQ, trusted, reliable, quality. I like them. So I'm gonna go ahead and line this up. How did that go? Was it like this? I think it was like this. All right. I'll go ahead and slide that together. I just gotta put my hand back here, pick up the half shaft axle, and it makes it a lot easier to wiggle that all together. And then I just gotta line these holes up. And start the bolts. Just the whole whole thing backwards. <clears throat> but good thing is some things are supposed to move a little bit easier than than before you took it off. So hopefully get everything right. I think. Oh, here we go. Maybe. Is it starting? I think it's starting. Little to no resistance, I'm not cross-threading anything. 
beautiful. That one's in there and start it beautifully. I like to do all four and start all four before doing any kind of final tightening. It's already threading by hand. Try to pull it out, just straight pull out and it doesn't want to. That's how you know you're on the threads. If you don't know, now you know. that one started and go for the lower one on the far side click click nope nope there we go there's a click Ooh, I think it clicked for me. Okay, well, I'll take that as a click. All right. Now that the four bolts are back in here, all I gotta do is, well, hello? Okay, now that the four bolts are back in, as I was saying, just gotta lift and wiggle. And that that slides right back in there. You can even, oh yeah, that's 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 a lot easier than than before. So I'll tighten that there. Uh, Cause there's usually always a washer there. This is a regular castle nut. So the only thing that's truly holding that on is the, the fine grooves in these little, the heads. That really puts the, the vicing on it not wanting to move. And this is, this rotates. Every mile, every inch that you move, it, this, this rotates. So if it doesn't lock in some way, if it's not a locking washer, then you might want some kind of a washer there. So I went ahead and found one and, you know, the spare stuff over there. So I won't be tightening this until I get the rotor on and then I'll be doing the uh, rotor locking sequence I was actually talking about earlier to uh, not have the wheel spin or anything like that. But while you're in there with the fine tooth comb, got anything that's adjustable? Just give it a good, you know, little scrubby scrub right there. Just clean the, the threads off some and keep it nice because if you have to adjust it later, you're going to thank yourself. Just putting a little bit of time into keeping it clean. Plus, it kind of looks nice, honestly. I, I do like those. Those Rev 9s are really nice. So. Not trying to destroy my car in any sense. Um, let me get the uh, torque wrench out for the nut and uh, start putting this uh, rotors back together. Smear just a little bit of grease on that maiden surface because that's what gets stuck on the rotor. Nothing fancy, just right there. A lot of times it's that inner ring, but seeing how uh, I'm down in Florida, I really don't have to worry about that, but I am from the north, so I, I know that that can be an issue. So, depicting on where you stay, um, attack it appropriately. Uh, regardless, here's a nice rotor. Start putting everything back together. Should go pretty, uh, pretty easy. I'd, I'd rather have rims that fit completely correct, you know, without spacers. But sometimes you gotta work with what you got. And I do have these spacers here, which will help hold this rotor on and keep it flat 
Uh, two of these washers are bad, so I'm gonna go get two more. So, we've got those. Uh... The bolts are all 19 between the spacer and the actual rims, because uh, I think factory they come with 21 millimeter lug nuts, but I, di I didn't like them, so. Had to give a little extra love to the new ones. Uh, they have to crush just a little bit, so then they're going to end up uh, being loose here in the future. So I went ahead and gave them a little extra love than these ones. So that's all good. That's on there. The rotor is a... Uh, well, can't really mix that one up. So I'll go back, grab the two caliper bolts. I'll just grab the one. Place that down here. Grab this. Make sure you don't have this wire, oh, wire, my goodness, the brake hose, uh, twisted by the time that you put that on because that can actually uh, stop your fluid from flowing through. Or even make you, you know, brake drag or, you know, just give you a bunch of brake problems or car issues you don't need just because the caliper was twisted, which I've had a lot of cars come in. And the, the caliper is literally twisted, and that's that's the reason of the whole problem or the whole cause of it. So just be careful with that. Make sure that you know it's not twisted up or anything. So doing the wiggle, and I was able to catch it without even looking. And I can feel that I'm on the threads, and I do believe that was the 19 millimeter. So I'll switch off of the whole. This is what pretty much got me through doing the, you know, whole uh, backside of the bearing on the rear here. So now I'll take the small extension. I love when I'm able to be on a job and then switch it from the off side to the on side, you know, it's just like a big, big step in the project. It's okay. Kind of reach that halfway point. Okay, so the caliper bolts are back tight, those two, so that holds this whole assembly here. Like I was saying earlier, find a screwdriver or anything that can jam in between that rotor fin because as you're tightening, see how that, that's there and this whole thing is going to spin, so as it spins, it's not going to let it go anywhere and you can tighten this to as tight as you need to be which uh, the spec for the 350z rear axle nut is 177 pounds foot pounds so this is a, a small <laughs> very old and abused screwdriver from Sta the harbor freight torque wrench only goes i don't know if you can see it or not only goes to 150 foot pounds of torque when you got to get to 177 so we're still gonna rotate this around to get there so make sure that's loosened yeah we just this is i'm gonna put a slight stress on it but we're gonna do it all right so let's start lining this up that should be 140 which means this is 150. This is at that line too. See that? Zero, zero. So that's 150. Now we're going to go to 160, which is at zero. 
170. It's getting pretty tight. <laughs> 172, 174, 176. 177. That is literally like at the top of that thing. But that technically should be 177. Let's do this. I don't know if this is actually going to be accurate to 177, but. I don't even know if this thing still works. If it's cookie cookie or not. I think we're past 177. I'll try one more time. I'm pretty sure we're past 177. Accuracy has to be within 150 foot pounds there. There we go. Oh. I've had this for years. Pretty much unscathed. So that's there. There is no uh, locking cotter, cotter key, cotter, cotter pin to put in there or anything. It's literally just set and go. So I'll put my torque wrench back down to zero. That's a lot of stress on these little things, but. I love Harbor Freight. Still comes through, especially for uh, you know, not not top dollar. All right, so there's that. Rotors on, spacers on. That's back on. That should be everything but the tire and a good test drive. advantage of using your socket so much easier trying to do something like that like real small no no yeah that's where it's at That's actually not hard. Uh, it's really easy. Just bolt on, bolt off, couple bolts. Um, just know what you're fighting with and having just a few basic tools. And it, I think it turned out pretty darn well. Uh, I still have to go on a test drive, of course. But overall, though, I, I really think that uh, that should solve my problem. <laughs> what do you think, Pepper? Is it fixed? You don't know yet? You want to go for a ride? <laughs> yeah, you want to go for a ride, huh? Okay. Well, before me and Pepper go for a ride, a lot of people can fix a lot of things. Remember, don't doubt yourself. Believe in yourself. And, you know, things usually turn out pretty darn well. Not all the time, but, you know, y you learn in life. I don't know if she's... Is she going to day eat? She usually eats at night time. I don't know if she's going to eat during the day. Oh, there she goes. This is, uh, 
Chromata Pelma, Sienna Pubescence, uh, Green Bottle Blue. Just scoop it right up. That works. That's not too hard either. You gonna say bye, Pepper? Say bye, Pepper. Pe Pepper, say bye. You just, oh my gosh, you're just going to climb on me. Okay, this is what we're doing. Pepper, no. <laughs> All right. Thanks for watching.